There is an aphorism which says, success in any venture is certain when you put action on the knowledge. Our guest on today's episode seems to have imbibed this aphorism as she has built a successful business model around a simple traditional cuisine called Ewagoi by deploying brilliant branding ideas, digital technology, tested and proven delivery system, as well as contemporary business forms, processes, and methodologies. Welcome, young, zestful, free-spirited, adventurous political science graduate, Adane Ekona, CEO of Moelewa. Adane Ekona. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Now, from the first time I stumbled upon your brand, okay. I've been curious. What instigated this Omoelewa that we now have today? Okay, so basically cooking for me is a hobby. Okay. Being the only girl in my house, because I grew up with three other brothers, I'm the only girl and I'm the last child. So cooking was an inevitable chore for me. Okay. So I ended up liking cooking more than usual. The kitchen became like my best place in the house. Wow. Yeah. So immediately after my um, service year in Ondo State, that was in 2016, yeah. I had to take up a culinary course. And I knew, man, after graduation, I had to just set up something. And I knew it had to be in food. <laughs> so you knew that? I just knew that on. right from day one. I knew it had to be food. So I'm like, OK, Ibadan would be a good place to come to to start this up. And then we started Omoelewa. And that's how you started. Basically, I'm sure that's not started. how you started, but we'll come into discussions so we'll, we'll, we'll about the evolution about later. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I understand you correctly, mm -hmm. you followed your passion, your yes, culinary passion. Oh, yes, I did. And now you're smiling to the bank. <laughs> I love the way you smile. Uh, that answers the much. question. Tell us what the journey has been like since you started, since the time you conceived this. Okay. And the time you actualized the idea. All right. What was the journey like? What were the it's, things you did? It's, it's been an interesting one, to be honest. I've had my low moments. I've had my high moments. I've had times when I thought I was going to give up on this dream because no. it wasn't an easy task. But then I pushed persistence and now it's paying off. I love the way you say that it's paying off now. And that's a lesson for a lot of us. Yeah. There will always be low moments in business. Definitely. There will be exciting, exciting moments. moments. It's a well. mixed bag, mm -hmm. as they say. Yeah. But I still, I'm still curious. I want to find out when you decided that this was going to be a commercial venture for you. Okay. You must have thought of the startup resources. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I did think about the startup resources. But then there's something with a hobby, something you love to do. It's enough to push you into whatever you want. Don't think of the capital now. Your passion is enough to push you into whatever you want to do. To be honest with you. So for you. Yeah. If one is to venture into this kind of business yeah. and you want to give them like a list of startup resources, yeah. the mindset. Your mindset comes in first. first. It comes in first, honestly speaking. That's what I'm getting. Don't think about the money first. Do not think about the money first. Isn't it often said that money answers all things? Not all things. There are people with this money that are entirely not fulfilled. Deep. To be honest with you, not all things. So your passion first. Your passion first. I don't have all the money in the world. My place is not up to how I want it to be. But then I'm doing what I love to do. That's enough. The passion. What about know-how? Passion is not enough. You love to cook. Okay. But what you're doing today is not often what you cook around your house. Mm -hmm. So how did you acquire the know-how? Oh yeah, I mentioned earlier that I went to culinary school, yeah? After graduation, you know, so yeah. I, there's this lady in our area, she's been like the one who has been selling to us right from childhood. I knew I wanted to know like the secret to this recipe because I tried so many recipes online for her going. Yeah. Believe me, you see a lot of things online. You will not get the original recipe. It's like getting into a secret course, to be honest. The wow. recipe is something they don't even like to disclose. So because of the trust and the relationship we had built over time, she just had to teach me. Well, at a cost, it didn't come free. That was basically it. So our recipe is like the original. Now, I, 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 I want to defer discussion okay. on this so later on in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, but first of all, I need to understand the kind of training you underwent. Okay. After graduation, you went to a culinary school. Yeah. For a duration of, we gathered about six months. Yeah. 
What were the kind of trainings you were exposed to at the culinary school? It was it was intense. I've never been under that mo much pressure in the kitchen. What was honestly. the curriculum like? It was it was pretty good. Continental classes, African classes, baking and pastry, African pastries, and all that. It was it was fun. It was some intense like international standard kind of training. It wasn't what you get in like your kitchen on a regular. Now I'm curious to find out. You have been cooking since childhood. You love yeah, to cook, love and to you cook. cook always around your house. Yeah. Why did you have to go again to a culinary school? You can never know it all. True. Growing up, I only got to know what my mom used to make in the house. True. Do you understand? So going to a culinary school was just to broaden my knowledge. Okay. They exposed me to a lot of things, honestly. So it wasn't a waste of time and money. Definitely not a waste of time and money. I gained a lot. I gained a lot. Wow. Now, um, was that where you learned how to how to cook a wild boy? Actually, I got a recipe there, to be honest with you. But I still wanted the street recipe. The street the recipe. The street recipe. So that you can gain street credibility. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what that tells me is that after you graduated from the culinary school, yeah. you still went further to yeah, train. Yeah, I did. I did. I went further to train. Where? In my house, actually. The lesson was in my house from a woman on the street. Break it down for us. Woman who hawks. From a street hawker. A street hawker, yeah. Who hawks Ewa going? Ewa going, precisely. On the streets of Lagos. On Ogun State. Because okay. I grew up in Ogun State. Song I was born and brought up in Ogun State. Song yeah, water, precisely. So she hawks. She taught me how to make it in my house at a cost. Okay, so yeah. you had to seek out a street orca Definitely. who taught you how to prepare a wagon. Yes, I did. And you paid for this. Oh, yes, for the I training. did. So she was like a professor. Master. In this game. Master. <laughs> <laughs> Master. <laughs> this is getting more and more interesting. It's, it's a great thing that you're doing, I must say. But great things don't come easy. They are mm -hmm. a result of a process. Mm -hmm. What kind of educational exposure would you say you've had in the past that is coming handy now right now in okay. this business so funny enough this is not like the best and um, the first business i've actually done i remember oh. like when i was in university say my 200 level precisely okay. there was this acid strike that lasted for almost six months then i remember when i got home i told my dad hey pops i need a show glass i want to start making stuff he looked at me like this girl are you okay that kind of look i told him yeah i'm being serious i remember the show glass thing was like 11k then i put it outside the house i didn't even have any form of culinary training then i didn't have to go to any school then i will, i used to check up um recipes online and stuff then i bake i used to bake cakes make donuts make fried meats in that show glass and i usually was sold out day to day day to day in front of the house in front of the house it was as I was when my dad, he, I think he even spotted the business spirit in me first. He had always known I wasn't the one that was cut out for a nine to five life. I was more of the make, make this money, come off a hair, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> come off a hair kind of person. He has always been like that. Coming up. If you look at branding, mm. as I think you know, it goes beyond the uh, christening of the brand. Mm -hmm. Though the christening, the, the name major, you gave the brand is major, major yeah. and the name you gave it is, 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 is just notch. there. It's top notch. Thank you. Okay, considering... <laughs> what are the other things that you had to do when it came to branding the business? You... Sell a wagon, mm -hmm. not even the other kinds of beans. Uh -uh. Just a wagon. Mm -hmm. Weren't you afraid that you might be limiting yourself? No. You were it? Not one bit. Because honestly speaking, to be honest with you, yeah. I pretty much studied the environment. This was something I noticed. Okay, the reason why these people were coming for this particular dish was because they couldn't get it around. So there was no fear whatsoever. Mm. It was like our most sold out item daily. So there was no, in fact, it gave me more confidence instead, mm. to be honest with you. And is there only a wagon that I would get if I come into your restaurant? Only a wagon and everything that follows are going. Bread, Such as? plantain, ejakika, momo, beef. Then if you want to step down, omitutuwa, then drinks. 
and gizzard, I guess. No, th those ones are still coming in. It's a step at a time. Oh. A step at a time, trust me. A step at a time. I love that concept of a step at a time. And that's one thing I like to sell to a lot of people. Yeah. One step at, at a the time. time. Yeah. You're definitely going to get there. You get there. Now, um, what informed your decision? I know you studied in Ibadan, University of Ibadan. Okay. You never lived in Ibadan before you came in here uh, to study. Okay, yeah. And when you finished your youth service and decided to pick up this business, why did you have to come back to Ibadan? Like I said earlier, if we had gone to some other state in this southwestern part of Nigeria, Agoy is something you can get on the street. Okay. Do you understand? But here in Ibadan, it's like gold. Agoy is gold here. Because no one is doing it. Exactly. And I, I was agree. I was pretty familiar with the Ibadan environment, having been here for five years because of Asu Strike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because of us as I was pretty familiar with the environment. At least between the period when I was in school, I, I don't think I ever tasted Agoy once. Or even heard where it was sold. Never. You, all you get in Bado is Amala, Gufe and stuff. Eh, eh, so and that's what people call it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so you saw a gap. Oh yeah, I did actually. And you decided to move into the field. I decided to fill that, that loophole loop before anybody straight else. Up, before uh, anyone took it. In. Ah. <laughs> and you the the ah. evil girl in me just had to come in sharp sharp. <laughs> the evil girl. <laughs> you had to come in sharp sharp. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, you strike me as someone who not only because you are a social scientist mm -hmm. studying political science in UI, but you also strike me as someone who is alive to your environment. Yeah. Where did you acquire the skills from? I would take that back to my course political science honestly oh, really? speaking yeah it made me aware of things that were happening in the environment actually oh did i mention when i was in school i was a social director of my department in my 400 you level so i had to there are times when i had to move up and down when i had to source for funds or departments and stuff so i was going everywhere it made me familiar with things so that you were really happening. interacted with ibado city i pretty much did student. yes i did i did and that gave you education mm -hmm. about the social dynamics yeah, in the battle. Yeah. And because of that education, you observed the gap. I, exactly, I did. And I took you just my time. Fast to fill yeah, that gap. exactly. Well, um, maybe when the camera stops rolling, there are some other things that I'm going to ask you. But, <laughs> okay. Um, I'll keep that off the radar for oh now. God. Okay. Were there permits or licenses that you needed to incur? Um, to be honest, I made inquiries. I asked people if I had I needed a license to start up, and most of them told me a eh, no. Okay. So I felt like okay, fine. But I believe if we want to get bigger, definitely we should acquire a license. Okay. So when that time comes, we would sort that license. Oh, but for now, but for now, you still operate. Still operate small. low key. Okay. What about taxes? Ah, yes, so. Okay. Ah. <laughs> yes, so at least I know I've had to pay once. They've come to ask me for my tax once. Okay. Yeah, so. Now, um, tell us more about your market research activities. Mm. Because that seemed to be something you did intentionally. Oh, I gathered that you did a business plan because I investigated you before I knocked on your door okay. that you needed to be featured on this program. Okay. And we heard that you did a business plan, you did market research, you did market survey. Okay. So you were kind of applying your political science, uh, social science skills mm -hmm. as an intellectual, as an academic yeah. or scholar. You were, you, were, you were applying them to business practices. Mm -hmm. So, what form of market research did you conduct and how did you go about it? Uh, it still boils down to my being in Ibadan for a while. Okay. Honestly speaking, everything still boils down to my being in Ibadan for a while. Figured out a loophole, grabbed the loophole by the horn, and we flew from there. Yeah, but what are the specific things you did? What are the specific things I did? Nothing major actually. It was just observing, to be honest with you. Observation is part of social science uh, methodology. I didn't have to go about asking people anything. I just knew what I, I had to just drop, okay, babe, this is it, this is it, this is it. And it worked out. So you were observing how the society uh, was Exactly, out. exactly. It was just it. Did you have to conduct any survey at, at some point? Uh, not exactly. All right. What about 
marketing and promotional activities. Honestly speaking, yeah. that's like one of the biggest challenges on ground right now. Really? To be honest. Because How do you mean? You can never have enough clients. True. You can never have enough clients. True. You want more clients by the day. Yeah. So right now we're still focusing on social media sponsored ads and stuff. But then we still feel we need to do more. It's an assignment on our part, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. So you are dissatisfied with the situation of things right now? Uh, in the area of marketing? Mm, yeah, on my part. Yes. Anyways. Now, I'll come to challenges and constraints later, but okay. I want to know the specific things you do okay. when you think marketing and publicity and promotion, mm. PR. Mm. What are the things you've done so far? Like I said, I've seen billboards okay, on the streets. On the streets. Mm -hmm. I've seen the way you branded your restaurant and your okay. business premises. I've seen the way you brand your uh, packages, packages and stuff. Mm -hmm. What other things did you have to do, or have you been doing? Like I in said, the area earlier. of marketing, because uh, the delivery thing you talked about yeah. couldn't have happened without you propagating your message to the world. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it has just been social media, Instagram precisely. No other platform, to be honest with you. Just Instagram? Just Instagram. How about Facebook? Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. And Instagram is a market on its own, though, to be honest with you. A lot of Ibadan people got to know me when we opened an Instagram page, to be honest. So you would not advise that I ignore the Instagram if I were to go into... Do not ignore, because it opens you to a lot of people that you would not be able to reach if you were in a particular place. Instagram connects you with people far away. And if I ignore Instagram, mm -hmm. what other options would I have by way of promotion on social media uh. that you would advise? that I would advise. I don't think I'm in the best position to advise you of that because I am not actually practicing these things right now. I would only pray, I would only tell you to do what I do right now. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. If I tell you go on another platform, I can't tell you what it will be like, okay. to be honest. So let me only preach what I know about. Okay. That's what I feel. So besides Instagram, mm -hmm. what else do you do? Besides Instagram, what else do we do? Word of mouth. That has helped a lot. Funny enough, not on my part though. Because I've actually not opened my mouth for a day to tell people, I sell a going, you know. People who tasted told people. Those people told people. That's how we've been getting most of our customers as well. Mm. At the end of the day, your food speaks for you. The food speaks for you. And I bet you will have ideas as to other forms of traditional uh, marketing and advertising activities but for constraints of funds yeah. since the business is still, still young, young and growing mm -hmm. uh, um, if you had funds to expand and to market mm. what kind of mm. marketing activities <laughs> would you embark upon uh, because I, 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 so that you know that I researched you properly. Okay. Um, I was told you did a comprehensive business plan, and your business plan must have highlighted the things you want to do in marketing, unless you don't want to share with us. I honestly so don't want to share, so that my competitors won't just grab my ideas and. I got you. Oh yes, you I did. got you. <laughs> I got you. Oh yes, you I, did. I just felt there was there was so much that's been held back. Oh, yeah, we, I have competitors around. How about I can't just spill my business plans like okay. that. Yes. You know, don't worry, it's fine. Don't worry. Let's share a few tips with you. Don't worry, it's fine. All right, Anani <laughs> is not willing to share with us some of those marketing strategies that she has uh, documented in her business plan, but it's okay. Okay. We'll let you pass for now. Okay. We'll be revisiting that later on. All right. I, I, I'd like to know um, when you think of this business, mm -hmm. celebrity endorsement. It's something that's working for a lot of businesses today. Yes, so. Do you have such plans? If we're lucky enough, of course we'll grab it. Okay, yeah. so you have your eyes out for such. Yes, I do actually. And that will be a marketing principle. Honestly. Is that also part of your marketing plan? 
in your business de plan. Definitely. And um, if you, you know, you know, you know, I have it on one of the things I must achieve. Please tell. An endorsement. It's one of the things I promised myself I must achieve. Really? Honestly. You say must. Must. Not I should achieve. Ah no, not you must do. Wow. Yeah. I'm taking a lot of nuggets away from you today and it's quite inspiring. I mean, when I heard about your business and I visited uh, as an espionage, as a spy, I just looked but around. I hope you enjoyed the beans too. Well, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the beans too. That's the cocoa right you now. You want my response? Oh yes, I do. Share with us those secrets Hero. in your business. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Let's trade off. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I refuse to be calm. No, we'll talk off camera. Don't worry. Uh, but it's my job to give my viewers business tips, entrepreneurial tips, okay. enterprising, entrepreneurial ideas. <laughs> no, we'll talk about it. You're not willing to help me. Uh, don't worry. We'll talk about it. You're going to be a hard nut to crack. Trust me. We'll talk about it. Okay, I trust you. Yeah. Because of your name. Okay. And because of your smile. <laughs> I trust you. Now, but let's look at branding because okay. it's related to marketing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be willing to talk about that. Okay, I see. All right. Uh, I've seen your brand identity. I mean, Oma Lewa is okay. unique, very unique, uh, at least in our palace, but not unique in certain respect. Because when we think of Lewa, we think of a street orchard. Yeah. Not the way you're doing it. Exactly. So if we look at it, we situate Omoelewa as your brand identity mm -hmm. within the context in which it exists now. Okay. It will be innovative and unique. How did you come about that name? Why did you settle for that name? Is that the name you started with originally? No, that wasn't the name I started. Remember I told you we had a test run from like February till like April, May, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so when we realized we wanted to focus on just Agoin, we knew we had to get, before it was one very tush English name, funny enough. We realized, hey, this English name will not say Lagoin. <laughs> you are any bad one. Why not find a name that is local? In quotes. In quotes, yeah. So that people can easily relate with. I had like three names then, funny really? enough. Yeah. And then I had to tell people I knew, we had to send messages to different people, which would you prefer? And stuff, then Omoelewa had the highest number of votes. Then we had okay. to settle for it. So, you actually did a survey? I did actually. Scientific. Mm. So, again, your social science background played is a major role. Out. Yeah. So, you, you, you tested, you test around the names yeah, as I a did. survey. Yeah. And then the one that got the highest, highest percentage. Number, yeah. Which were the next and the third name? <laughs> first runner or second runner? We are not, we can't start saying it now. Some people might decide to pick it up like that. You know, Adane. you know, <laughs> although there are sweet local names as well. Yes, yeah, so, but I cannot know if they are sweet unless you tell me. Oh. Okay, let me just <laughs> let the cat out of the bag. We had Elewa D. All right, That's and we the had first and we had Ewa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Omelewa took the day, and I must okay. say that Omelewa is Oba's gone. Oba's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if. You look at branding, mm -hmm. as I think you know, it goes beyond the christening of the brand. Mm -hmm. Though the christening, the, the name major, you gave the brand is major, major yeah. and the name you gave it is, 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 is it's top, just there. Top notch. It's top notch. Thank you. Okay, considering <laughs> what are the other things that you had to do when it came to branding the business? Because you had to rebrand. Oh, when when yes. you change the business model and you change the business focus, mm -hmm. you rebranded, you rechristened. And I had to repackage. Re yeah. So what are the other things that you did? Um, we basically... Okay, funny enough, that was when we even opened an Instagram account. The previous business didn't have an Instagram page, to and be honest with you. it didn't have a delivery. You. It didn't have a delivery. It was mostly eating, eating. We had to open up, first of all, an Instagram page for this. Even before we put up a picture, the only thing on the page we had was Ewa going in Ibadan. And oh. that was enough reception. People's ears were standing already. Yeah, I can imagine. Honestly speaking. Because since I left Lagos, um, when I'm in Ibadan, I don't even think of eating a wagon because for real, I I never think I'm going to get it anywhere anyway. We 
made it yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for making it happen. Oh, I must thank say. you very much. Thanks for the courage uh, mm -hmm. that you, you, you put into it. Yeah. So what other considerations went into your branding process? Okay, we knew we didn't just want Because to... what differentiates what you're doing now yeah. from what the street hawker, the hawker sits selling a wagon on the street yeah. does, one of the, what differentiates it is the branding effort that you're putting yeah, to definitely. it. Definitely. So we need to explore that. Okay. Like you said, you only get ever going on the street. We made sure we found a spot where you could eat it comfortably. Normally, when you buy food in random places, yeah. maybe they give you nylons and stuff. We went for paper bags instead. When you are giving local food with international packaging. That was an attraction for so many people. Paper wrappings. Paper bags. Was it branded? Branded Omoelewa. Bold with the logos on it. Hmm. Very on point. Hmm. And honestly, the paper bags have even done a lot of advertising for us. Because when people see, they be like, ah, ah, kilo wa bibai. Share wa ni, show dre wa lo. That kind of thing. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That's the kind of reaction. The kind of reaction we were getting. Coming up. What are your little moments? Have you had any? Ah, oh, yes, yeah, so. You've had any? Is there, is there any business that hasn't had its low moments? Anyone who tells you business has been smooth is obviously lying to you. Really? In a nutshell, packaging has been, I think we got it right with the packaging. Honestly. I think so too because I've seen your packaging. We got it right with the packaging. And it must have cost you some money. Of course it did. But you spend money to make money, you know. You're kidding me. Yeah. So <laughs> people should not. Don't be doing a cargom. You want people to <laughs> <laughs> don't do a cargom. You have to spend this money if you want people to know you. Wow. Honestly. So branding is not cheap. It's not cheap. It's not actually. I think our packaging even sells us more than the food itself. Really? Honestly. That's what you found out. Yeah. People go like, ah, kilo de, no real one, no. Packaging la manje. I go like, we know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what are the other things you did? Because uh, the packaging, lovely, mm, fantastic, no doubt about it. Well, some other activities must have been integrated. Nothing major actually. That was basically all of it. Just your IG and the packaging. IG packaging. Word of oh, mouth. And word of mouth. And it's been working for you. It's been working so far. But we also so know far. that you intend to expand on your marketing activities Definitely. as funds yeah. rolling. Yeah. All right, let's leave that for a while. But related to marketing is the location. Oh, yes. I've seen the location of your restaurant. Unfortunately, we can't mention it on air because okay. it's commercial. But as someone who is a student of business, mm -hmm. um, I recognize the very critical significance that location plays in marketing. Definitely. And where your restaurant is located is a very strategic place. Mm -hmm. Bodija is strategic in Ibadan. Mm -hmm. And then the restaurant is in the heart of Bodija. And then you chose office areas because Bodija has residential section yeah. and office like Ikoi and office section yeah. and you chose where the offices are where people will want to do mm, lunch definitely. and probably even breakfast and mm. some probably late afternoon meals was that intentional or it just happened to be honest with you it wasn't exactly intentional what if i told you the place i chose to set up here yeah, was yeah. the first shop i actually checked out when i moved in back into ibadan really honestly speaking so luck played a role then i think luck did Probably heavens just wanted to shine its light upon me. Which we thank heaven for. Oh that. yes. Because location is critical to marketing success. I know that. Uh, and where you've chosen is strategic. Mm -hmm. Easy to get into, yeah. easy to get out from. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at um, online stores. Okay. Today's selling. Mm -hmm online is growing, growing at a fantastic rate are you there not yet but at the moment we're actually working on setting up an app where people can since we said we're taking local international yeah. okay now bring it on 
an app where people can actually go online, order their food, and we'll have it delivered. It's actually in the works at the moment. Wow. Yeah. But isn't it perishable food? You uh, can't service geographical locations too widely. Mm, no, that's the thing. But as time goes on, don't be surprised you find an Omoelewa outside Ibadan. As an outlet. An outlet. Mobile kiosks. Pick-up spots. But the headquarters still remains in Ibadan. Fear not. So that's part of the plan. Yeah. You see, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, we should look up to having a pick-up point in VI, in New York. Funny enough, we have people calling in from lots of places like that. Sorry, do you have a spot here now? We're like, no, sorry, very soon. You can't tell people no. Yeah. Just tell them very soon. It works. Okay. Yeah. And I bet you are taking down their contacts as they are calling. Definitely. 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 Ah, that one so, customer matters. So that when you arrive at that location, that the first you call. We don't arrive. By, by, <laughs> by popular demand. We don't arrive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love what I'm hearing now. It's okay. really making my stomach really, really cool and putsy. All right. I do know that the online thing can work, but I'm still concerned, okay. you know, about geographical coverage mm. isn't that a concern for you it's not too you can't limit yourself are you going to have a while going canned foods no but then since we know it's perishable it shouldn't last more than a day yeah. if you know wherever you want to take it to it's going to take more than a day don't bother you don't want to spoil your business yeah. you do not want to yeah do not so bother. You just tell them that you were telling those who that very soon very soon we, it's not like we can't take the others, but we know if we take it, it's bad for us. Because by the time the food gets to them, it will be bad. So there's no point. You seem to have things worked out. For instance, if some bank is listening to you now and they feel <laughs> we can invest 500 million into this business. It strikes me as someone who already has everything worked out. Not only because you have a business plan, but the way you talk. Oh, yeah. Will I be correct if I'm I the say... One, I'm the only one who can sell my business with this much passion. I dreamt the dream. Oh. So I'm the only one who can actually talk the talk. And it's believable the way you're talking about yeah. it. It's believable. I might be your competitor the way we're doing it. <laughs> you're bring selling it, me Bring it idea. on. <laughs> bring it on. Now, there's, with all this array of innovative ideas that you have brought to bear on the culinary item we are going, mm -hmm. Are there other innovative ideas that we should be expecting from you anytime soon? Of I know you've course. talked about having kiosks. Mm -hmm. You are not looking at outlets, you are looking mm -hmm. more at kiosks, kiosks yeah. in different locations, different locations around. Yeah. What other innovative ideas are you looking are we to expect from you? First of all, know that there are actually a lot more ideas in my head. But since my competitors might be listening, I do not want to spill the bean. So just keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, and watch out. Well, I'm watching. Okay. And my glasses are <laughs> properly cleaned to watch out. Okay. But you still must give me a hint. Give me a peep into that corridor. I don't want to talk about it, honestly. I really don't want to talk about it. I like everything happening more like a surprise. Like you didn't see ever going coming to Ibadan. No, I didn't. That's the same way. Not in my lifetime. Not in your lifetime. That's the same way you wouldn't see the next thing coming. Such as what? Don't worry. Keep your fingers crossed. They won't cross themselves. Keep it crossed. That shows you how eager my fingers are. Look, uh, Adane is holding back so much because she doesn't want her competitors to uh, into the secrets of some of our business plans. We can understand that. We can understand that. Mentoring is very critical to success in today's business. Okay, yeah. Who are your mentors? Um, I would have to say most of my chefs back in culinary school. They are trained people. So when I need advice or I need someone to put me through anything, I go back to most of them. And they have the experience. They, they have the experience. Them. They've been in this business for a very long time. They've seen a lot. So they're always willing to open up their arms to me, mm. to answer my questions, to put me through. Many of them are proud of me, actually. <laughs> I, I'm also proud of you, to be honest with you. 
Uh, like I said, we did a lot of espionage activities Yay. around you before we unveiled ourselves. And I'm also proud of you. Thank I mean, you. a young graduate, well educated, doing fantastic things like this. Uh, except the other side of it I'm not proud of is the side that's holding back information so that competitors But, but I already not. explained that part. You explained it and mm. I'm buying into that explanation okay. because I want this business to be around for a very long time. Mm, thank you. What are your low moments? Have you had any? Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, so. You had any? Is there, is there any business that hasn't had its low moments? Anyone who tells you business has been smooth. Is obviously lying to you. Really? Honestly. Honestly. There were times when, okay, like initially when I started, I was the only one. I had no hands or anything to help. No help? You couldn't no hire? Help. I couldn't hire because then business couldn't pay for an extra person. Extra hand. I would be the one who cleans, who cooks, who serves, who does everything. Then sometimes I would go home and ask myself, God, what is this? And it wasn't like the money. It wasn't like the money was even coming in so much because it was like the initial stage of business. So the stress was, it was, it was killing. So you get home sometimes. Sometimes I cry and ask myself. I know I can't call home and tell them I want to come back because I was the same person that said I wanted to come to Ibadan. And they warned you. It would be they would be disappointed, and I do not want to disappoint anybody. So I had to be more happy. Mm. I had to, <laughs> I had to just I had to just chest everything like hey to babe chest I chest I chested I it I'm like, back, <laughs> like babe you are in this you are in this you have to see it till the very end. You seem to be advising entrepreneurs out there, yeah, um, startups mm -hmm. that they should just brace it. Patience is key. Don't turn back. Don't turn back. Do not turn back. So you had many low moments, especially moments. in the initial days. The initial days, yeah. But and now, your own strategy was, you just told yourself there's no turning there's back. There's no turning back. I won't go back. I cannot go back. And that has worked for you. More than worked for me. More than, More than worked for me. Tell us, if you can, um, how you source for materials for the condiments. Okay, there's a market around us here, a major market around us here, but we get all our stuff in the local market around here. Coming up. But were there exposures you had growing up that you can point at that is helping you in business now? You buy from the open market. Yeah, we do. Do you have a strategy for ensuring that uh, um, you get the exact species of beans? Because I reckon that oh, yes. to get the outcome oh, yes. that you consistently deliver, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the commencement process must be a certain species of beans. It can't just be any kind of beans. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't have random people you buy from. Have a particular group of people at the market who you know would supply this on the we don't just go to random people we have people who sell these particular things to us our oil woman we know her our beans person she knows the kind of beans we want she gets it for us so it's like that so you get the same taste every time you come to the store okay yeah and this procurement and i want to reckon that you're not going to delegate that as well uh oh well i actually delegated that because you already know who you're gonna send them to anyway. i you know what i did yeah i took one of my babies to the market i showed her every single person i told them now she go to come if i know if he come yeah sell to her how you would sell to me okay. the woman grinding grind for her how you would grind for me that's basically it yeah yeah uh, and, and I bet since it's already working for you, uh, except that the items, will, the specific items will not be mentioned, but uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't like to keep going back to issues, okay. so I'll let that pass. What kind of mindset would you recommend? You already touched on one, actually, when you were talking about your low moments. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, look, you took that decision that regardless, I ain't turning back. I ain't turning back. I've no. got to keep going. And that for me is, um, if nobody's going to take anything away today, if that's the only thing that 
the average viewer out there is going to take away today. This interaction, this conversation is, has been worth the effort. But like the Oliver Twist that I am, I'd like to know the other kind of things that come to play for success when it comes to mindset issues as an entrepreneur, a startup, in this terrain of ours. In this terrain of ours, you know one, one, one law that has guided me right from time, yeah. I always believe what is what doing at all is what doing very well. And you should always live today like there is no tomorrow. Okay. So giving your best at every point, no matter how it turns out, you pull through. It's either a lesson or a blessing at the end of the day. Is it a lesson or a, or a blessing? blessing? But give it your best shot. Give it your best every shot. Time. Your everything. Give it your everything every single time. Even when you don't feel like Even it. Even when, when you don't feel like it. You have to like drag it. yourself up. Nobody no. can drag you more than you. It's the honest truth. No matter how much people tell you, we know what you are going to, you don't know. Really? I mean, they wear the shoe, I mean, they wear the pinch me. You don't know. So they shouldn't try to encourage you. Mm -mm. So you, you seem to be advising people not to subscribe to Pity Party. No. I don't do the Pity Party game. Honestly speaking. Because it doesn't help you. It doesn't help. Who Pity help? I wonder. <laughs> mm. Mm. I wonder. So just get your sleeves rolled up and roll up your going. sleeves. If you have to play in the mode, play in the mode. Do it. Get the job done. What about those who say, "Oh, you need the encouragers. You need people." Who you see care how, for can you. you see the look I'm giving you right I now? I saw it. I can't get away with it. Why would they tell you do your best? Show you you don't know you're supposed to do your best. Today. I know. Uh, hey, but, so what do they want? To, what do they honestly want to tell you that you do not know? Wow. You know these things. You are probably wow. just in denial. Wow. That's the truth. Sometimes people just say, oh, yeah, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, you... Get your spirit and your flesh together and do it. Even when no one is helping you when to no... that. Ah, I said I was a cleaner, a cook, a service girl at some point. Only and, me. And janitor too. Janitor, everything. Market goer. So you can imagine. If I wanted to die, then I would have died completely then. Mm. But no, I pushed myself. Push. So we should have a mind that pushes. And now I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm chilling now. You're yeah, chilling now. Yeah. So um, that mindset is critical to success yeah, it's as really an entrepreneur, critical. as a yeah. startup, especially in this our terrain. This our terrain. This yeah. our terrain. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, we've talked about low moments. Mm -hmm. Can we itemize the challenges that you have faced in this business or that you encounter in this business? You may have overcome some of them. Mm. And there are some that you'll still be facing. I, to I told you a major challenge has to be, like I said, the customer thing. We're still in the process. Yeah, that may not be a challenge. It that is actually, ah, it's a major challenge for me. Okay. If I don't get as much customers as I would like to get, then I'm not resting. I am not. So your marketing resting. drive is is it's still intense and yeah you're still going to like all through like all through last year yeah yeah it was strictly instagram and everything but this year i decided one of my resolutions was babe whatever you have to do people have to get to know you this year i don't know how you want to do it hmm. that was why the first thing when we resumed this year we put up a billboard and we know how many people have come in through the billboard hmm. now the next step is okay what other way can we get a customer again every way possible now we want to touch it's a challenge for me if i don't get it right i am not resting wow. so the drive for customer the drive for customers is one challenge you just feel that i haven't overcome it yet okay i shall overcome it amen we're very very positive Hallelujah. and we're prayerful you shall overcome that challenge uh, there will come a day when you will look at starbucks and say those are my mates. <laughs> oh yeah, it will happen. <laughs> and look at KFC and say, I'll oh, keep running behind you. <laughs> um, let's look at your personality. We've been talking business, business, business all this while. Um, as a startup, as an entrepreneur, a lot of people don't know that 
your personality in relation to the type of business you do mm -hmm. uh, helps in a great measure. Let's get to know you. Ah, uh, you know my name already, yeah? Adane. Concord, Ekona. Concord. From Imo State. Born and brought up in Ogun State. I'm a very playful person, actually. A very playful very person. Very playful person. Do you know a lot of people don't believe this is Omoilewa? Yeah. Why? Sometimes they come to shop and they think I'm a sales girl there, self. Okay, and how do you know. handle that? What's my own? My own is to collect money now. See me anyhow you want to see me. So you just play along we'll like play you're along. a sales girl. Yeah. You just play your way to the bank. Ah, exactly. Like files are for Kakadele. I love it. It's the honest truth. Mm, mm, mm. I am somebody who can, I can fit in anywhere, to be honest with you. I can fit in you anywhere. You don't take life seriously and mm. don't take yourself seriously. See, this life is not hard. If you take it where you just kill yourself for nothing. It's the honest truth. Just live, live each day, be happy, smile. And have you always been like this? I've a playful, always been like this. lively person. People who know me will tell you this very unserious girl. It's the honest truth. This one with every single thing she did laugh. It's the truth, that's how I am. <laughs> Even when you were in pains and you had those low moments. <laughs> Why don't you know me? It's the honest truth. When you finish crying, you will clean the tears. You will smile back. So this is the personality. This is who I am. This is all of me. And obviously and certainly it's helping business because the first thing a salesperson needs to have is a lively outgoing Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of people who come in to tell me, do you know you are the reason why we come back here? Wow. Because some of us have to cultivate that yeah. kind of personality when we want to sell. Mm -hmm. We have to appear outgoing. Yeah. Um, but someone like it's, you already it's, has it it's effort, latent. It's effortless it's for me. It's already natural to mm. you. Wow. I will want to find out how this personality was nurtured and groomed. And that leads me to the next question. What's okay. the background like? What was your family setup like? Oh, okay. So uh, I'm from a family of six. Mom, dad, three other brothers. Then moi, I popped out. Which stage are you? First, second? Last. Okay. So Only you were girl. the darling of the family. Huh? Huh. They taught me to be tough, actually. Growing up with boys. Growing up with boys. They don't and see being me. the last they don't, one. They don't see me as a girl, and it's sad. I always tell them every day. <laughs> I be girl. Seriously. And what, and what do they do when, when you tell them? They're like, what do they worry? They give me that reaction. So they taught me to be tough. I think that's why I can make decisions. Shall people tell me, oh, you're supposed to come this world as boy. I'm like, no, it's good I came as a girl. You came as a girl yeah. in your physio. <laughs> <laughs> in your physiognomy. You came oh as a girl. Gosh. But that brain, my brain of a man. Igbo man. <laughs> exactly. Only Igbo. Only Igbo. <laughs> <only ibu. laughs> oh, the Igbo. Yeah. Oh, the Igbo. So now, um, if. I get you correctly. Okay. Growing up in that family, mm -hmm. there must have been plenty of love, though they taught you to be tough. Yeah. And that perhaps nurtured the free-spirited nature, nature that you had latently as, as your yeah. natural nature. And they helped to nourish it and nurture it. Mm -hmm, exactly. And that's why it's playing up now. Yeah. But were there exposures you had growing up that you can point at that is helping you in business now? Nothing really. I was an almost get inside kind of child. <laughs> to be honest, my parents didn't let us mingle so much. Everything I learned was majorly when I, when I came, when I moved to Ibadan for my university education. Okay. That was when, okay, I didn't have parents telling me, hey, don't go here, don't go there, don't do this, don't do that. I explored as much as I wanted to. Okay. And that exploration, were there things experiences, exposures, events, activities of certain persons or philosophies or ethos or credo that you I, I, interface I, I with. I, I, met, I, met, I, met, I met a lot of people actually then. Okay. A lot of personalities, big, small, normal, everything. Everybody had a major role to play in my life. I learned a thing or two from people. My university was when I had to live with people who were in family for the first time. True. 
I learned there was more than what I had at home. Okay. There was more to people than what the kind of people I had at home. Do you understand? Yeah. So it helped me. It helped me tolerate a lot. It helped me learn a lot. And and that lasted a four plus one years. No thanks to us. <laughs> No thanks to Asus Strike. Strike. Yeah. Four plus one. Yeah. Five, five years. years. And you explored deeply I, and robustly. Honestly, and it's paying I did. off it's now. It's paying off now. And I, I also bet that certain ethos must have been derived from those interactions that will form your personal credo now or philosophy of life. Mm. Share with us. I told you my philosophy of life already. Yeah. Which is live today live today like there is no tomorrow like there's no tomorrow and that's what gives you this uh, burst of energy you only live once every moment Seize so the all moment. you have to do Capo Diemen. do it now don't Seize procrastinate wow wow before i let you go uh, i always try to find out from people uh, what their plans are if there is okay. or if there are uh, to ensure that the business outlives them. Do okay. you see this business being around? And please be honest with me. I honestly... Uh, okay. Being around for another 50, 100 years. Honestly, yeah, we're working on that. We're still pretty new in this. So we're, tr we're trying to groom the business in a way where it can even run in my absence. Because mm. mm. if business cannot run in your absence, you have failed at it. Absolutely. You have failed at it. So that's from this initial stage. I'm actually trying to make that happen. So even if I'm out of Ibadan today, I know my business is still running. Well, you've been able to achieve that. We are slowly getting there. You cannot achieve it in one day. True. We are slowly getting there. At least I've had situations where I haven't been around in a week, two yeah. weeks, but then it still kept on running. People did not notice my absence because they used to get their food back to back. Now, to achieve that, mm -hmm. you must have built in systems, structures, and processes. Yeah. Where did you learn that from? You studied political science. Do not forget, I went to culinary school as well. It wasn't just cooking, they taught us. Oh. It wasn't just cooking, they taught us practically everything that you had to learn when it comes to this food game. This food game? Yeah. You, are, you tactically avoided using the word business. <laughs> It's a food game. <laughs> you make it sound like when I play with the play, but no, they play. Now, business. Yeah, they taught us more than recipes yeah, so and business stuff. Business principles. Business. They taught us lots of stuff, to be honest with so you. So, it's actually advisable for people to go to culinary schools. Yeah, go to. Where they teach business. Business, yeah. As well. Go to good culinary schools. And I bet you are a good student. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> oh, yes, I was. So, share with us some of those business principles you were taught. Ah. In, in closing, Shit. if you were to mentor a startup, not necessarily in this business area, okay, what are the business principles and ideas you will be telling them? Okay, so, um, I think one thing people should understand about business is it's not necessarily the capital. Okay. Do you understand? So what is it? Your drive. I mentioned it earlier. If there is no drive, there is no business. If there's no drive, there's no business. What about the ideas? They say ideas rule the world. Ideas rule the world. You should have an you yourself should be able to know what you're going into to start with. You should be able to know what you're going into. You can't just open a restaurant and not know how to cook and not love to cook. Do you understand? Miss Concord Adane Ekona. I want to thank you for coming on the program today. Thank you for having me it's on It's been stimulating program. having this conversation with you. And I want to say it's been mentally enriching. And most importantly, it's been motivating for me. And I believe for most of our viewers out there. Well, that'll be it on the show today. Thank you so very much for sparing part of your time with us. Until next time.